touchy phone. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered together today on the 18th of the 10th month on our creator's calendar as we reckon it, which happens to line up with, what was that, the 29th or the 30th of December 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And today we're taking a little segue from what we were reading to cover a topic that came up this week in a few different conversations. So what we'd like to cover is an aspect of our Mashiach, who he is specifically in relation to the language of creation and what we can do to help determine what is true with this knowledge. Okay. So I'm willing it would be edifying for everyone. This first reference here and the few that will follow is from what is called the recognitions of Clement. This in particular is the Syriac translation. I'll show you a picture of the book uh, cover in just a moment. And it differs from the Greek and Latin translation. It does not have all of the books in that those ones do. And even with the Greek and Latin versions, you have what's called the recognitions and then the homilies. And it's like two different versions of the similar transactions, although there are different accounts in them. So it's something that definitely has to be studied out. But I used to equate it kind of like, I thought one was illegitimate. Then I was thinking it was more like Kings and Chronicles, but I have not completely gone through the homilies personally, so I can't vouch for them. Although there are some things in there that are, are accurate. This version was written in Syriac. And the reason why it's important is because it has the 10 missing chapters from book three. I believe we've actually covered that before, but we, and we'll go over a little bit of it uh, in just a moment for context, but we're not covering that in detail right now. So right here, before we get started, everyone should be familiar with what we call the Bible, where our Mashiach is called the Word, who was from the beginning with Elohim and as Elohim, through which all things were made and through which all things are held together by the Word of His power. So keeping in mind these things, I, I don't want to go back over what might be familiar with everyone. We just want to cover what you might not be aware of and see how it all ties together. Because some people might have doubts about the legitimacy of the renewed covenant, if you will, or the, you know, who exactly our Mashiach is. For reference, if you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and you look up the coming of Melchizedek, it quotes a part of Yeshayahu where it's the coming or the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And they say it's the acceptable year of Melchizedek right there, using that title for our Mashiach in place of the name Yahuwah, which is a phenomenon that you will see throughout the entirety of the scriptures. But real quick right here, this is from book one, Syriac Recognitions of Clement. Okay, this is talking about the generations that went um, after the flood. The idea here, you can see Hebrew, is called the beloved of Elohim. So until then, one language was held, and that was the Hebrew, which he calls the beloved of Elohim. That was the only point. You can feel free to read these things on your own. I, I really encourage you to do so, but we don't have time for that, for everything that we want to cover. I do want to mention, though, that the language was shifted. It started going perverted here after they started getting involved in magic sorcery so when they started doing um perverting the truth the language got perverted as well all right that's something to keep in mind the next reference here i want to show you the title of the book first this is the cover of it right it's called the syriac clementine recognitions and homilies you can find this book online they might have different translations or versions of it out available that are inexpensive when i first got this and i 
made the missing chapters public and individuals want to start buying this, it skyrocketed over $900 and then it became unavailable for a while. It dropped back down to 300 and then it became unavailable. Although, like I said, they might have different translations or they might actually have this version again. But if you would like this in PDF, I have a copy of it. So this next section, again, we will not cover the whole thing, but I will scroll through it so you can see the father's mentioned and Kepha actually titles him as the self-existent one who did not come into being. And that's who he identifies the father as. But this is the missing chapters of which he's talking about um, who the father is in relation to our Mashiach and the Ruach. So, I really encourage everyone to take the time, not only just to read this, the entire, you know, missing chapters here, but compare it with everything that's in scripture. For our purposes, though, we want to go for our Mashiach here. It says at the bottom, we're only trying to cover who he is in relation to the language, right? This is, Starting at 3.8, it says, Therefore, the Elohim who is without beginning begat his firstborn son before all created things, as is seemly for Elohim, while he was neither changed nor succeeded nor divided, nor did he emanate. And these are all different concepts of Gnosticism that were being taught by heretics at the time or promoted as doctrines for people to get perverted on. That's why he's mentioning these things. There's even more detail about refuting these kinds of um, Gnosticisms in Irenaeus's or Irenaeus's Against Heresies, which is a five book set. And then his taught one, Hippolytus wrote the refutation of all heresies, although I have not read that one completely. But getting back on track, and we're not trying to cover all of this, although I am going to let it scroll. And you guys can take the time to read it when you have a chance. The point was saying that our Mashiach, who, as it just mentioned, was the firstborn of all creation right there. Okay. It says, he begat his only begotten and firstborn son before all creations. Indeed. All right. And I am sorry, we really don't have a lot of time to go through everything I'd like to. So I, I'm trying to get to the very points that are absolutely necessary here in relation. The fact that he was the firstborn of creation, which again is what you can read in Psalm 8. And that is directly connected to him as in his person when it's speaking through the Ruach there as the wisdom from Elohim. It's mentioned directly that that was him in the Apostolic Constitutions, but you can see it yourself when he describes the Ruach only says what comes from him, it does not do of its own, but it speaks his will to the people. And then his taught ones mentioned that men of Elohim spoke moved by the Ruach and not of themselves. So they were speaking our Mashiach's words. And another witness for that is all the Psalms that are mentioned by David. It's literally La Dawid, or can, and, and it can be said by, for, or to Dawid. And it's also concerning or in regard to the beloved. And every one of those Psalms that are like that are in his first person. So right here, There's one part in here that I wanted to show you. It says that our Mashiach, yeah, here it talks about the, the Ruach here is the pledge and guardian of the things given to us by our master, who not many days after his ascension we received, being the only begotten being of the only begotten, the seal and exact likeness of his power, just as even the only begotten and firstborn son before everything. 
is the image of likeness that is that is exact without difference of the existing power meaning our mashiach is the fullness of elohim bodily and if you've seen him you've seen the father because he only says what he hears and he only does what he sees as he said right but right here is the important part so it says but which she the set apart ruach and for context he calls her a she in his writing and that is what wisdom is known for throughout the proverbs and the, the hope or wisdom of shalomo and sirach ben yahushua it's identified as a she and that is that's explained right here as well but it says but he the son provides the appearance of of the self-existent one who did not come into being when he appears to both intelligible and sensible things. For he is not the self-existent one who did not come into being, but rather his power is entirely of the self-existent one through his existence, because the Father is, and he's about to explain that, through his existence and mightiness or divinity as they say here and this completely shows accordingly what he is okay um uh, you know what i don't think i got to I, I skipped that part there's one part that mentions that our mashiach because the self-existent one is, then our Mashiach had to be. Just as the light, or just as the substance of a body produces a shadow, so the fact that the Father exists is that our Mashiach had to be. And that will be explained more in time, but that is what he's getting at. The idea, though, is like a hand in a glove. He only does, or like a, a shadow to a man that is what our mashiach does although he has his own will he has just like we were created with freedom of will liberty of conscience he submitted his will to the father just as he said he says i know that his words or his commandments are everlasting life therefore whatever the father says that i speak so it's not inconsistent with the truth here. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm sorry I didn't find that part. I think it was in a part I didn't share when it's talking about the Father, and I was trying to get to where it mentions our Mashiach specifically. But we did go over this part before, and I'll share it with you again. And again, we'll share this with anyone who wants to. But we'll I want on. it, but can I ask one question? In the beginning, yeah. you said this was a Gnostic concept. Is this a Gnostic book, or it's not? Oh, I'm sorry. Right here. Down here, where they're thinking that he, our, the father's male, female, or that he begat himself, or that he emanated or divided. These are concepts that came from Gnosticism, that take the one who is one and make him more than that. that that's what I was talking about. I'm sorry. So where it talks about like he's emanating or there's different things like that right here. He did not succeed or, or divided, nor did he emanate, nor was he even diminished in anything. All right. For you recall how bodily passions are things that we have even avoided describing to the soul. Meaning lust is not a thing of the soul. It's a craving of the body. So the idea of well, that he goes into that more, but that's what I meant by the Gnosticism. He's trying to correct wrong opinions of Simon the Magician, who's debating before him in uh, Caesarea Stratanos at the time. And then he's having conversations with his taught ones at night later on about these things in more detail. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. All right, this next one right here is, um, this is actually the, the word Mashiach. And I kind of wanted to get back to this one, but you'll see what I mean here in a minute. 
The truth is true in every context. While he is the word from the bosom of the Father that was sent forth, it will not return to him void, which it didn't. He accomplished everything that he was set to do, just like he said. Um, what he speaks happens. It does not void. It is effective. And it, that's what you see all throughout. When he says, be well, and someone's well, or I desire it be cleansed, and he's cleansed, what he says happens. That's not true for any other messengers anywhere in his word. But you can find where he's appeared to men covertly as the messenger with both Daniel, for example. And he says, be strong, and he strengthens, and he says, speak to me more, because what you're saying is happening. Right? Well, I'm paraphrasing that part, but he says, what you're, you're, you're strengthening, you, you know, keep speaking. Or he tells Yahezkiel, Ezekiel, stand up. And the Ruach picks him up and stands him up, right? It's his word that accomplishes what he says. So it's not inconsistent with the truth. Right here, the very name Mashiach has the essence, and this is why the Hebrew language is the beloved. If you re We'll read it in just a moment. But the very fact our Mashiach was called the beloved connects that together now here real quick these are all definitions straight out of ernest klein's etymological dictionary the only part that is not a definition is that working to contain with a question mark or in body and that is the yod het with the um the yod is the working hand and the heth the the het is literally a wall or a container it lines up with the firmament for creation, and it is the living creatures that went into the ark is the only place where that word is used. Letter chayth yotel, the letter chayth for the for that very word, but it's translated as living creatures. However, everything else right here is either directly from scripture, like you can see the instructions falling like rain, or his words like fire. The two judgments that are going to happen by him who was given all authority is first by water, then by fire, which the name they say is like water. The sheen is like teeth or fire. So these are just simple pictures, but you don't have to rely on that. It's just, that is a thing. Okay. Mush. That top right is to depart, to remove, to care for, right? He departed, he removed, he took away. Mush, mush, right? Memshin, memshin is to touch, feel, handle, examine, manipulate, right? It's an accessory or attendant. Shamayim, right, is the work of his hand, the first and the last. That, that was just a picture there. But shiok, like mashiok, the sheen yod chayth, is to speak, talk, converse, was eager, was diligent, he mused meditation and a shrub like a, a sprout or the you know something sprouting out of the ground and all of these things i'm sure if you take just a moment and think about how does that apply to our mashiach you can see well he's the one that came to talk to us he's the living breathing touchable fillable communication he's the word made flesh this is literally in the very language when you break it down and then you have the common name for it, Mashiach, right? Which is the anointed who was given to the, the Melech or the king, the Kohen, and the foreteller, of which offices he was all three. And then when you look at the, the breakdown right underneath it, Mame is a place of or a means through which as a prefix. And then Shin Yod is a gift, a present, or something, a thing desired. The coming one or the desired one of all nations is literally um, foretold in the stars, and it's a title for our Mashiach. Now, you can see that just in the language right here with just his, just the title Mashiach and how that represents the truth. You can do that with every word all throughout the Hebrew. And he, the truth, the meaning of these words brings comprehension right that's the whole point of what we're trying to share now i want to share with you real quick these are all those definitions so you don't have to just take my word for it you can feel free to pause 
right, and look at them yourself. I will go through it for you real quick. Sorry about that. This one's the anointed king or high Kohen, Mashiach, right? And quite often these things have definitions that might not always make sense at first. But you have to keep in mind, he was he not smeared and maligned? Was his becoming flesh not a reason for abuses in that manner? It is the truth. PBH means post-biblical Hebrew. Excuse me. That means they derive the meaning or sense of this word it's, it's a, as a living language, and it, it changed kind of over time. In the very same way words in English do, and every language, it's continually spoken as time goes on. One one is like uh, obfuscate or oblivious. I'm sorry. It used to mean to cause one to forget in the 1820s. And now it means to not be aware of your surroundings. Like, oh, you already forgot. Is this in that same Syriac book or is this a dictionary? These are all the dictionary definitions of, of the words I was just showing you. And this is all from Ernest Klein's Etymological Dictionary of the Hebrew language for readers of English. We also have the PDF for this one as well. It is currently published by Carta Jerusalem. Or at least it was the last that? time I checked. What? Can you send me that with the, yes. the Syria too? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a brother online. He does what's called Ericology. His name is Eric Bissell. He goes into great, great detail about every letter. He goes into breaking down oh, the meanings of a whole bunch of words. He, he does some amazing stuff in there. And one of the one of the key things I really appreciate that I won't I won't cover because he does an amazing job is he shows how every letter points to our Mashiach and his work, what he's doing, who he is. And and I encourage you guys, if you want to, to look that up because it perfectly goes in line with everything you see here. I'm sorry, it, literally you the language. that name and where, where I could find him? It's called Ericology. And then that's on YouTube. His name is Eric Bissell. He's on Facebook. There's another gentleman, um, Mountaineer something. I'll have to find the YouTube for you, but I'll, I'll share it in the, in the Telegram chat. He does a video for each letter, and he also does like who our Mashiach is as the Aleph Bet revealed. And it's really, it's really awesome. I've never focused on that part. What has been shown to me is literally the definitions for the letters themselves lined up with the creation account lined up with the patriarchs is literally all of his works through history for what he's doing until the millennial reign i think i just found so, him on, and that's i think i just found him on facebook uh it's e-r-i-k tology t-o-l-o-g-y dot yeah. net for videos yes so he, he's an amazing resource there are the only thing that he has a poster he's done a lot of work on it he lines up the aleph bet with the feast and the creation account in a different fashion and i don't know how that happened you'd have to ask him but what what came to my mind was what was in the book of yobelim in chapter two you have 22 works in six days and he said these go along with the 22 patriarchs from adam to Jacob, and this one works with that one for set apartness and righteousness when i when the 22 and the 22 came to mind I thought well what about the letters he's the aleph through the tau and this is the work of his hand the things he's accomplishing each day so you literally line up every letter with every work you look up the definitions of what these words mean in the dictionary and it's just like this you write down everything, not, not just what you think it should mean, but all of it. 
And then when you look at what he made, what was said about it, the name of the patriarch and what his name means, and then the actual fact in history, it all goes together, every single thing. Uh, and we won't do that today because there, we don't have enough time, but I'll give you one example. And that's the whole premise of what I'm trying to share here is why this is important. Aleph. Aleph is a prefix means I am or I will, right? Lamed is a is to teach or learn, to go, poke, pull. It's a shepherd staff. And pay is an open mouth. So literally, I will teach and learn with my mouth, right? The, the word Aleph in the dictionary means to teach, to learn, to be domesticated and trained, to, to be yoked together in fellowship, a close companion, thousands or one. And it literally means to, it's, I will teach and learn with my mouth to bring forth thousands yoked together and domesticated for the bet to be in his house. So, I mean, it, there's amazing stuff. And that lines up with everything perfect, all things tov, with Adam in the garden, walking with the voice of Yahuwah, who's instructing him with his mouth on keeping the garden. So the very fact of things playing out, and that lines up with the highest Shamayim. The first work, the ideal end state that we're going to have, all the esteem of Adam that will be ours for those that are chosen, as it as it's written, right? You could do that with every letter, every work, and just to tie in his name, Adam, means what the Ma is likeness, right? Dam is blood. I will bleed. I am the likeness. Right, I am a similitude, or of the I am of the earth. Adama is the ground and dirt. All of those things are true. So, like I said, you can do that with every letter, every work, and that's literally the works of our Mashiach. What he's doing through history, that's enumerated from the creation account in parable form. But we'll go over that again some other time. He's also called the wisdom or hokma of Elohim, which is personified in the Ruach saying, I am hokma in Proverbs chapter eight, have dwelt with insight and I find knowledge, foresight. We know that that is our Mashiach's word spoken through the Ruach. So when you look at that word hokma, you can get a sense of what he is. And this is another one I just wanted to share with you. I don't think I have the definitions for it, but I might. You see, the Chet Samik means to be sparing, to have pity, right? Chet by itself is a fence, a perimeter, an enclosure, a limit, a container, or a boundary, right? A Samik is a support. It's literally a fulcrum point, like, like your elbow. It's what everything's hinged on, and that's actually lined up with the stars. Everything's hinged on the stars running the corset before them, which are the children of light, Right. And then the Dalit, which is a door, right? It's a state of being, a decision. In the Greek, I didn't know this until just now, but the delta is a change of state, right, in math. And then the the Dalit or the delta in Greek is a prefix. It means that great one. Just for some of the we'll get to this later, but Dionysus, for example, the blasphemous usurpation with Nimrod for a title for a Mashiach is D Eon Nisu or Nisus, right? But D is that great. Eon is a vone or inequity and Nishu is bearer. The great sin bearer or the great inequity carrier is was Dionysus's name, which is a usurpation of our Mashiach's title and what he was doing. But I mention this because language is, has meaning. The Greek had heavily been influenced by the Hebrew. And I don't know if that has any effect on it with the fact that he is the door. But I thought it was interesting. Right here you can see Psalmic Dalit is stocks for torturing. Also to plaster or whitewash to consult with whispers or secret counsel. Right, that's sowed. 
and he is the secret counsel of the upright, right? He's when you have him, you're put in stocks for torturing. He has pity upon those who have wisdom, right? All of these things tie together. If you pay attention, I'm sorry, this isn't wisdom. Wisdom is chokma. I'm completely off. This is chesed. This is the word for loving kindness. Um, also an embodiment of who he is, right? He is lovingly kind. Our Elohim is love. And our Mashiach is the embodiment of Elohim, right? All of Elohim bodily. So right here, chesed is to be kind, to be pious, unmerited, tender, loving kindness. Meaning it's not deserved. There's nothing we can do to earn it. Dr. Bill Barrick, who teaches the Hebrew uh, grammar, the 503 Hebrew grammar from the Master Seminary on YouTube. He also has his own YouTube or a website where he does his own college class. He teaches it for free. He gives it out for free. All you got to do is sign up. You can get all the stuff and take it so you can learn the grammar. He calls this word covenant love. He defines that as covenant love, is chesed, right? But that very same word is means to be reproached, to be ashamed, insulted, or ignominy, meaning to not be, yeah, to, to not be honored, right? And that's by the ignorant who know not what they do, right? It is kindness, goodness, mercy, affection, lovely appearance, and it's related to they assemble. And then I put the, the quote, gather my kind ones together to me, Psalms 50, verse 5. So I messed up there. I wanted to put Hokma. I thought that was the right picture. I didn't, I didn't catch that in time. But it's the same thing. You can see here the literal, what is in the language, the meanings of the words as you break them down. It's not something you don't just make up stuff and please if you ever hear me say something that you don't know where it comes from, please ask because I'm either mistaken or there's a source for it, but you should never just make things up or what comes into your mind and call that good because that is directly cautioned against by Kepha. So right here, I'm going to let you see these and you can stop and dig in as much as you want. If we ever get a chance to, again, I'd really like to go over some of the books we have, like Our British Ancestors, for example. It has an appendix in there with, I think, over 2,000 words that come from the Hebrew into the English. And you can still see the same sense and meaning for what it is. We, we did a little bit of those, but there's a lot more. I think in the scriptures, or what we call the Bible, they have some four to 6,000 words. And even in... I think it was William Tyndale's times so many years after over a thousand years after the Northern kingdom was taken into dispersion, they still had some 5,000 English words straight from the Hebrew word for word sense and meaning. Now we have over 20,000 words that come directly from the Hebrew, but that's not because the Hebrews grown. It's because we've, we have, multiple de derivations from one word like yobel jubilee jubilant jubilation etc you get that for quite a few different words and that's why that's expanded but almost even in our the furthest captivity of any of our people when they were in persian madai the language was being shifted a lot they still retained over one third of it was always an unknown that comes right from the hebrew they call it an unknown with the Indo-European, but when you study and you start learning it, it it's because the, all of this was Hebrew and where they went, they influenced. You could pick up some words, you drop some off, and then uh, you lose some things and you gain some other stuff. You can actually track it with the Celtic, with the Gothic, the Germanic, how it romanticized into the ancient Greek, Latin, and then um, later on, divorations with French, and Spanish, for example. 
But moving on, right here, this right here, if you keep in mind what's in Scripture, no one's ever seen the Father. He's not a man. Nothing can contain him. He himself contains all things. Uh, he doesn't have a body. So the one coming who's trampling on stuff, the one that returns is our Mashiach. And we're going to connect that together real quick. This is from Yeshiyahu 63.1. I actually have that relating to... Uh, uh oh. There we go. It's supposed to be right here. Sorry about that. All right, well, we'll just start right here. These are different scriptures that all have significant parts to show that he is the beloved and the word, and that ties him back to the beginning, the, the one that was pre-existent, firstborn, like we just mentioned, through which all things came to be, okay? It says, and it came to be when he was alone praying, and the taught ones were with him, and he asked them, saying, Who does the crowd say that I am? Or who do the crowd say that I am? And they answering said, Yahukanon the Immerser, but others Eliyahu, and others say that one of the old foretellers has risen up. And he said to them, And you, who do you say that I am? And Kepha answering, Hamashiach of Elohim. And we just read what Mashiach actually means, right? And strictly warning them, he commanded them to say this to no one, saying, the son of Adam has to suffer much and to be rejected by the elders and chief Kohanim and scribes and to be killed and to be raised the third day. That's what happened with his language. That's what happened with the truth. So what happened to his body of believers. So the persecutions of the martyrs through the dark ages. Okay. These are all pictures reflecting the same things. And of willing, the more we look at this, the more that will be, you know, readily apparent. It says, and he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake daily and follow me. For whoever desires to deliver his life shall lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall deliver it. For what is, excuse me, for what is a man profited if he gains all the world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the son of Adam shall be ashamed when he comes in his esteem. And in his fathers and of the set apart messengers. But I mean, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death at all till they see the kingdom of Elohim. And it came to be about eight days after these words, taking with him Kepha and Yahuchanan and Yaakob, he went up to the top or to the mountain to pray. And it came to be as he prayed. The appearance of his face changed, and his garment dazzling white, and see two men were talking with him, who were Moshe and Eliyahu, who having appeared in esteem spoke of his death, which he was about to complete at Yerushalayim. The Kepha and those with him were heavy with sleep, and having awakened, they saw his esteem and the two men standing with him, and it came to be as they were parting from him, Kepha said to Yahushua, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three booths, one for you, and one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. Not knowing what he said, and as he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son 
the beloved, hear him. And when the voice had spoken, Yahushua was found alone, and they were silent, and reported to no one in those days any of what they had seen. So you can see Yahushua is called the Beloved, and the Beloved is the Hebrew language, as we already read. Here's another witness for that. The fact that there's a man called Yahua, who is also Elohim, who sees men, eats with them, wrestles them, is also something throughout the renewed or throughout the old covenant that alludes to the fact that it is our Mashiach, the mediator between Elohim and men that we just read about. It is anytime the father wanted to appear to men, he, he did so through his son. He does have messengers. He has sent for purposes, but when he wants to appear, he sends his son. And when his son comes, he speaks with power and authority. Right here says the revelation of Yahushua Mashiach, which Elohim gave him to show his servants what has to take place with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yahukanon, who bore witness to the word of Elohim and the witness of Yahushua Mashiach to all he saw. Baruch is he who reads and those who hear the words of this foretelling and guard what is written in it. For the time is near. Yahukanon, to the seven assemblies that are in Asia, favor to you and shalom from him who is and who was and who is coming. And from the seven ruachot, or spirits, before his throne. And from Yahushua Mashiach, the trustworthy witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and kohanim to his Elohim and Father. To him be esteem and rule forever and ever. Amen. See, he is coming with the clouds and every eye shall see him, even they who pierce him. And all the tribes or families of the earth shall mourn because of him. Yes, amen. I am the Aleph and the Tau, beginning and end, says Yahuwah, who is and who was and who is to come, the Shaddai or HaShaddai. Now, there's a direct reference to Yahuwah being the Aleph Tau. Many people think that this is the Father, but it just said that it's Mashiach, which was given the revelation from Elohim to give to his servants which is another thing that you'll read in just a moment. And the fact that he's called the Shaddai, I, that, that tripped me up at first, but he actually appears to Abram and he says, I am the Shaddai, walk before me, or El Shaddai, walk before me and be perfect. And that was the father speaking through him in the very same way. So there's no inconsistency. There's another reference to this in the Dead Sea Scrolls where it's talking about Moshe, and Moshe is speaking, but the voice of Elohim is coming through his mouth. And it's talking about that very phenomenon is something that's special. Now, when you know that happened to Moshe, then you know that there's one coming like him in all things. That was a foreshadowing of our Mashiach. It was done. That's why that was done. In that very same way, that's why our Mashiach, when sending Moshe to go deliver the people, made him an Elohim. Because his father made him an Elohim, and he does nothing without first seeing or doing it. That pattern is just over and over again repeated. So, Ab willing, again, this will make more sense as we go. This is another section from Revelation. It says, And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the foretelling of this book, because the time is near. And just to be perfectly candid, the seals were pre-existent they had already happened and they were being opened up and unsealed at the revelation in 93 a.d to yahukanon but they were events that had transpired previously that's why they were unsealing them and then the trumpets was what was currently going on and what would be and then you had the bulls which is what was future so even in the very revelation of revelation you have the truth manifested who was, who is, 
and who is to come. If just for reference there. But it says, he who does wrong, let him do more wrong. He who is filthy, let him be more filthy. He who is righteous, let him be more righteous. He who is set apart, let him be more set apart. I'm sorry, just a moment. Please forgive me about that. Let him do more wrong. It says, he who is set apart, let him be more set apart and see, I am coming speedily and my reward is with me to give to each according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Tau, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, all authority was given to him and everyone is going to be judged by the word of his mouth in that day, just as he said. Again, these are concepts from the scriptures that are there that you can check out at your leisure. <laughs> Baruch are those doing his commands so that they are so that the authority shall be theirs under the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. Um, but outside are the dogs. Your son just gave me that. Oh, just a moment. Um, I just got surprised. Surprise, you're going to be babysitters. I mean, grandparents. And it's a little onesie. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. So, kind of got good news. But, um, I apologize to continue here. No, congratulations. Thank you. All right, back on track here. It says, Baruch, or this should say Ashray, prosperous, confirmed, authenticated, walking straight, happy, right at blessed that it means all of those things it's an amazing word but it says prosperous are those doing his commands so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city but outside are the dogs and those who enchant with drugs and those who whore and the murderers and the idolaters and all who love and do falsehood i uh, yahushua have sent my messenger to witness to you these matters or these in the assemblies. Just as Elohim sent Yahushua, Yahushua sent Yahukanon, right? He, that same pattern, that hand in a glove thing, or the, uh, the body produced the shadow effect. Again, when I find that reference, I'm sorry, I will share that with you. But if you look at those missing chapters from book three, it covers that in great detail. We don't have time for that here, but I highly recommend everyone look at that. So it says, I have sent my messenger to witness to you these in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of Dawid, the bright and morning star. So he is the root, the source and the offspring of Dawid. That right. And the Ruach and the bride say, come. And he who hears, let him say, come. And he who thirsts, come. And he who desires it, take the water of life without pain. For I witness to everyone hearing the words of the foretelling of this book. If anyone adds to them, Elohim shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this foretelling, Elohim shall take away his part from the book of life. And out of the set-apart city, which are written in this book, he that bears witness of these things or matters says, Yes, I am coming speedily. Amen. Yes, come, Yahuwah Yahushua, the favor of our Yahuwah Yahushua Mashiach, be with the set-apart ones. Amen. That's Revelation 22, 10 through 21. Now, for anyone that's not aware, 
the um, Yahuwah Yahushua being used all throughout the Renew Covenant writings, where it's literally the Father's name right before our Mashiach's name. You, you can see that in a few places, like in the Nazarene Acts of the Apostles, in Jackson Snyder's version of the Recognitions of Clement. Kepha mentions that very directly in a few places. He says, Yahuwah, Yahushua. It's, you can see it all throughout the apostolic writings, but it's hidden. It says, the Lord Jesus in almost every place there. Or it says, the, um, it will say, Yahushua, our master. Yahushua, Mashiach, our master, in most English translations, if you have the ISR or the Hallelujah. But in reality, when you look at the Greek, they used placeholders for, I think, about 20 different words at one point. And they used it for his name, the father's name, the word Adam, like man for Adam, upright stake, um, the, the word for Ruach. They had the word for a soul or for a spirit they would use for any old demon. But when it come to when it came to using the set apart Ruach, they would use the placeholder. And whenever you use the placeholder, they would say the name in the Hebrew that they had that marked for. When you look at those, that's where you find Yahuwah, Yahushua all over. Or it says, Yahushua, Mashiach, our Yahuwah, literally all over the Renewed Covenant writings. Twice it's mentioned in the book of Luke, where the, the shepherds come to the, uh, sorry, when he's born, and the messengers are announcing that to the shepherds. They said there has been born in the city of Dawid, Mashiach Yahuwah. And that's right there from Lamentations chapter 4, I believe. Mashiach Yahuwah was caught in their nets, whom we desire to live under the shadow of his wings amongst the nations. So these are hidden, and that's part of what's going on here. He is the language. He is the truth. And what he spoke happens. What he spoke is the, what we have written down. And it all reflects what happened to the truth, literally what he walked out in his life, which we're not going to cover tonight, but that's the point. Once you know that the language, both of the written, physical, the spoken language, and and the, uh, the scriptures themselves, his body of believers, and our Mashiach all follow the same pattern because it's all true, it makes it, makes it easy to get. But go through his Passion Week. That's how men have regarded the word through history. Through 6,000 years before the millennial reign where it's resurrected before early dawn. All right, so continuing here, it says, And it came to be when Abram was 99 years old that Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be perfect. And again, Yahuwah is a man saying he's El Shaddai who is also the Aleph Tal, that is our Mashiach speaking. In the chapter after this one, it says the word came to him, and Abram calls the word Yahuwah. He says, Master Yahuwah. And then it says the word came to him again, and he calls him Master Yahuwah. And then that word says, I am Elohim. So I am your shield and buckler. Your reward with me is exceedingly great. Now, this one is a little different, but I want you to keep in mind that pattern. As he is the shadow of the substance of the Father, and as he sees, so he does, here's the picture. Our Mashiach is the Yahuwah who was talking to Cyrus about the very things that he was going to do to let his people come back. And that very thing, just as our Mashiach said, everything in the scriptures about him, this is a pattern that our father gave to him as the one who is like the head or Karesh, Karosh, okay, who is the Mashiach. So while we read through this, keep that in mind, and Ab willing, you'll see what I'm talking about here. This is thus said Yahuwah to his anointed or Mashiach, to Koresh, or the one like the head, which that Resh or Rosh is also the head the pinnacle, the high point, but also the poor one. So there's, it's the first that will be one of the last. It's one of the last letters. But the, the resh is the work of creation. 
lines up with the Reformation, some of those that were of the last but will be first because they got rid of all the pagan idolatry that they were suffused with to turn to him. It's called the simple of Yahuda, or the simple of those who confess and acknowledge and praise Yah that guard his commands. Those are who are defined as the cattle in the Dead Sea Scrolls in one of the interpretations there. And that's what lines up with the letter H for the creation account. So just for some consistency there. It says, whose right hand I have strengthened to subdue nations before him and ungird the loins of kings to open before him the double doors so that gates are not shut. I go before you and make the crooked places straight. I shatter the gates of bronze and cut down the bars of iron, which is in Proverbs. When you look at the Septuagint, brothers that are indwelling in unity together are like strong foundations and guards against corruption. But brothers at enmity in the Masoretic text, when they're fighting, it says that they're like bars and, and gates against one another. It causes that kind of thing. But he breaks through them is what it's mentioned here. And I shall give you the treasures of darkness and hoarded wealth of secret places, so that you know that I, Yahuwah, who are calling you by your name, am the Elohim of Yisrael, or Yesharal, right? The upright of El, or those who strive with men and Elohim and overcome. For the sake of Yaakov, he who has what's coming at his heel, right? My servant. And Yisrael, my chosen, I also call you by your name. I give you a title, though you have not known me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is no Elohim besides me. A lot of people can get tripped up there, but if you look at what that means, that means there is no other Elohim apart from him. And that is true of the Father, who is the self-existent one who did not come into being. There is no other Elohim apart from him, period. He chose to make his son first, whom he calls an Elohim, just as his son sent Moshe and called him an Elohim. Those Elohims are, are only through him. Apart from him, it would not exist. In that very same way, he made all things and all is held together by the word of the power of, of, of his word, right? So the idolatrous Elohim are also from him, not used in a correct manner, however. Those are explained more in detail by Kepha, but I'm trying to show you that it is the truth. It is consistent. It can't be otherwise. It says, I gird you that you have not known me, so that you know, or sorry, so that they know from the rising of the sun to its setting, that there is none but me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else, forming light and creating darkness, making shalom and creating evil. I, Yahuwah, which, if you remember, his name is he who causes it to be, right? I, Yahuwah, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker, a pot shard with the pot shards of the earth. And it's the pot shards are like the scales of the underbelly of Leviathan while he slithers around in the muck mentioned in Yob. Does clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or your handiwork, he has no hands. Woe to him who says to his father, what are you bringing forth? Or to the woman, what are you laboring over? Now, he is the father through, through whom all fatherhood is named, is our father above. And our Mashiach in Yeshiyahu 53, the Septuagint version, he's called the father of the future age. And he's the one that's laboring with the children to bring them forth here. It's not that he is. Uh, these are different roles and concepts, but they're all true. That's my point. So I'm trying to point out where you can see these things. He is not the one who is all-encompassing, but he is the one who is the completeness of Elohim bodily. 
And that is found in the language, which is what we're to go to, to find the truth, right? Both the words and breaking down, like go into the Hebrew, like we were showing you. It says, I have created. Yeah, it, sorry, it says, do you ask me about my sons, what is to come and about the work of my hands? Do you command me? The 22 works Aleph through Tal through 6,000 years, right? I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, have stretched out the Shemaim and all their hosts I have commanded. I have stirred him up in righteousness and all his ways I make straight. He builds my city and lets my exiles go. Not for price nor reward declares Yahuwah of hosts. And remember what he says is because he speaks with authority and power. Thus said Yahuwah, the labor of Mitzrayim and merchandise of Cush and of the Sabiites, men of size, come over to you and they are yours. They walk behind you. They come over in chains and they bow down to you. If you've ever watched the, the movie 300, those they had giants that they were fighting with them with that massive army against the 300 Spartans. That was, that was Cyrus's army. These are the Cushites of the Ethiop, the, the big men that were going to fight with them. There was an exaggeration there, but it was a fact of what was happening. Okay. They make supplication to you saying, indeed, L is in you and there is none else. No mighty one. Remember, this is the one like the head. Okay. Truly, you are El who hide yourself, Elohim of Yisrael, Savior. They shall be put to shame and even be humiliated. All of them, the makers of idols, shall go away together in humiliation. Yisrael shall be delivered by Yahuwah with an everlasting deliverance. You are not to be ashamed nor hurt forever and ever. For thus said Yahuwah, creator of the Shemaim, he is Elohim, former of the earth and its maker. He established it. He did not create it to be empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahuwah and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have not said to the seed of Yaakov, seek me in vain. I am Yahuwah, speaking righteousness declaring that which is straight. Gather yourselves and come, draw near together, you who have escaped from the nations. No knowledge have they who are lifting up the wood of their carved image and pray to a mighty one that does not save. Now, when you know that it is Yahushua speaking, that has more impact on who he's rebuking. Right? Declare and bring near, let them even take counsel together. Who has announced this from of old? Who has declared it from that time? Is it not I, Yahuwah? And there is no mighty one besides me, a righteous El and a deliverer. There is none besides me, apart from me. Turn to me and be delivered all you ends of the earth, for I am El and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, a word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, so that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue swear. One shall say, only in Yahuwah do I have righteousness and strength. He comes to him, and all those displeased with him shall be put to shame. In Yahuwah, all the seed of Yisrael shall be declared right and boast. As Yeshiyahu 45, 1 through 25. This one is a little backwards at the beginning. Yahushua, therefore, knew that they were desiring to ask him. And he said to them, Are you asking one another about what I said? A little while, and you do not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. Amen, amen, I say to you. 
that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be grieved, but your grief shall become joy. When the woman that he mentioned that she was laboring to give birth to the male child, right? Which is Mashiach in you, the expectancy of esteem. Right? It says, Amen, Amen, I say to you that you shall weep and lament. All right, so the woman has grief when she is in labor because the hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the affliction for joy that a man was born into the world. And you therefore have grief now, but I shall see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and no one takes your joy away from you. And in that day you shall ask me none at all. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give you. Until now, you have asked not in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, in order that your joy might be complete. These I have spoken to you in figures of speech, but an hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I shall declare the Father plainly to you. In that day you shall ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself does love you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from Elohim. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. The word that will not return to him void, right? And again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His taught one said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and not using figure of speech. Now we know that you know all and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from Elohim. Yahushua answered them, Do you now believe? See, an hour is coming and has now come that you are scattered each to his own, and leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These words I have spoken to you, that in me you might have shalom. In the world you have pressure, but take courage, I have overcome the world. All right, and we can't cover all of this. It's getting a little on there, but I want to show you. I already read that one. We went over Mashiach and the definitions there. And then we went over Chesed and the definitions for that. Now, right here, chapter two, th this is important. There's a few things I want to cover about the language. The fact that it was going to be taken from us and missing. Okay. I don't, you can read this on your own. We've already covered Gad the Seer, the entire book, I believe, but definitely chapters one and two we've read over, and they have videos on them already. So I'm not going to cover that in detail, but I want to stop and direct your attention over here. It says, verse nine, Be joyful and glad, remnant of Yahuda, those who confess, acknowledge, and praise Yah, who do means confession, acknowledgement, praise. That who do la Yahua kitov ki leolam chazdo, right? Give thanks to Yahua for good, they say. But that Yahuda is, he will or he is confessing, acknowledging, or praising Yahua, right? That's what that name means. It says, and rejected of Yisrael, which is the prince of, or he who strives and overcomes with El, for deliverance is with Yahua. As you shall be a curse and blasphemy to all the families of the earth, so shall you be a baraka and favor forever. At that time, no cursed or unset apart people will be found among you, for everyone will help join you in the covenant, in the law, testimonies, statutes, and ordinances. And you and they shall have one L, one covenant, one law, one language. For all shall speak in Hebrew or Yahudith, the set apart language. That was actually um, Yahudith is what's used in what we call the Bible. 
they translate it normally as the language of the Jews in a few places. But you see right there, the restoration, the unity of mind, purpose, and law will also have the unity of language. That is also mentioned in um, Zephaniah, or Zechariah, I think we're about to see that. But right here, for let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach Yahushua, who being in the form of Elohim, did not regard equality with Elohim a matter to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and came to be in the likeness of men. And having been found in the fashion as a man, the word made flesh, he humbled himself. And when I mean that, it goes, I, I can't remember exactly where, but when I find it, I'll share they say that his soul is not like a nephesh that we have, but it is the living word from the bosom of the Father through which all things were made. He is spirit. That was ruach, if you will. And that is the soul of our Mashiach. It is not the soul of a man. All right. It says, And having been found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even or death even of the stake. Elohim, therefore, has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahushua every knee should bow, of those in Shamayim and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Yahushua Mashiach is Yahuwah to the esteem of Elohim the Father, not because he is his own father, but because he's inherited that name. That very phenomenon which our Mashiach says, I've come in my father's name. My father's name, which you've given to me, he says twice in his prayer in chapter 17 of Yahukanon. And then um, in the ancient history of Caldonia, the history of the righteous remnant of Hebrews through time, they had a tradition. Part of their laws of the altar was to name their firstborn son after their father to, to perpetuate the line. That was a requirement of their people as a fact of reflecting the truth here. <clears throat> right here, another witness to that is my people have perished for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I shall reject you from being a Kohen for me. Since you have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim, I also forget your children. As the living word is the Son, the only begotten of the Father, and as our Mashiach spoke his word and covenant into existence, and it was broken and violated, when we violate the Torah, it's like our children getting that. You can see it in Adam and Cain. You can see it in Aaron and his two sons. When they caused the perversion of the death of the, the child of our creator, it was rewarded to them, Gimel, in when their children were weaned. Yagamol or Yigamol, Yigmol. It's the same word with a yod in front of it. I'm not pronouncing it right though. But that's that type of reward or like a camel, what goes out with the goods and then will come back after a time. However, you can see that as you treat the word, so it happens with your children as a reciprocation. You reap what you sow. All right, one more, I think, and then we have to we have to go. Yeah, time. Okay, we're we're out of time. I don't have time for all this one. I just want to direct your attention. I'm going to let you see it real quick. You can feel free to pause. All right. All of these show that he is the word. Okay. And this is the last one. You can see right here that until idolatry and offering sacrifices for, to demons for magical arts was instituted in creation, the Hebrew language was prominent. When you had um, when you had idolatry first enter in, his language changed. When you had the rebellion of the towers, it was confused for everyone. And then you can you can even see right here. Um, yeah, we won't be able to get into this one next time. You'll have to do this next time. But uh, Tay Taffy even foretold that the language would be taken with what they're doing. So we'll continue this when we, uh, we can, probably next week. And until then, you all have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat, a great Shavuot Tov week ahead, and we will see you next time.